The night was pitch black, with only the feeble glimmer of stars offering any semblance of light. The road stretched endlessly, flanked by towering trees that seemed to loom over it like silent sentinels. Sarah gripped the steering wheel tightly, her knuckles turning white as she navigated the desolate highway. Beside her, Mark sat in the passenger seat, his face etched with worry as they drove through the remote countryside. It shouldn't be much farther now, Sarah said, trying to reassure herself as much as her husband. The GPS says the next town is only 20 miles away. Mark nodded, but his anxiety was palpable. They had been driving for hours, and the isolation of the countryside was starting to weigh heavily on them. There were no other cars on the road, no signs of life except for the occasional rustle in the underbrush. It was as if they were the only people left in the world. Just as Sarah began to relax, she heard a sudden thud, followed by a series of loud clanking noises. The car jerked violently, sending them careening to the side of the road. Sarah slammed on the brakes, her heart pounding in her chest as the car shuddered to a stop. What was that? Mark asked, his voice trembling with fear. I don't know, Sarah replied, her hands shaking as she turned off the engine. But we're not going anywhere until I figure it out. They stepped out of the car and into the chilly night air, their breath forming misty clouds in front of them. Sarah popped the hood and peered inside, but she couldn't see anything obviously wrong. I think it might be the engine, she said, her voice tinged with frustration. But I don't know how to fix it. Mark cursed under his breath, kicking at a loose stone on the side of the road. So what do we do now? Sarah looked around, her eyes scanning the darkened landscape. I guess we'll have to walk. Maybe we can find a phone or something and call for help. They set off down the road, their footsteps echoing in the stillness of the night. The trees seemed to close in around them, their twisted branches casting eerie shadows on the ground. Sarah felt a shiver run down her spine as they walked, the sense of isolation becoming almost suffocating. After what felt like hours, they finally saw a glimmer of light in the distance. It was a small house nestled among the trees like a beacon of hope in the darkness. Sarah quickened her pace, her heart pounding with anticipation. As they approached the house, however, Sarah's excitement turned to dread. There was something off about the place, something that sent a chill down her spine. The windows were dark, the curtains drawn tightly shut, and there was no sign of life anywhere. I don't like this, Mark whispered, his voice barely audible over the rustling of the trees. Sarah nodded, her eyes darting nervously around the deserted landscape. Let's just knock and see if anyone's home. Maybe they can help us. They approached the front door and Sarah raised her hand to knock, but before she could, the door creaked open on its own, revealing a darkened interior. Sarah hesitated, her hand frozen in midair. Hello? She called out, her voice trembling with uncertainty. Is anyone there? There was no response, only silence. Sarah exchanged a nervous glance with Mark before stepping cautiously into the house. The air inside was thick and musty, the smell of decay lingering in the stillness. They explored the house room by room, but there was no sign of life anywhere. The furniture was covered in dust, the floors littered with debris. It was as if the occupants had simply vanished into thin air. We should go, Mark said, his voice barely above a whisper. There's something not right about this place. Sarah nodded, her heart pounding in her chest. They turned to leave, but as they reached the front door, they froze in horror. Standing in the doorway was a figure, tall and shadowy, its features obscured by the darkness. Sarah's breath caught in her throat as she stared at the ominous silhouette, her mind racing with fear. Who are you? She managed to choke out, her voice barely audible over the pounding of her heart. The figure didn't respond, only stood there silently, its presence filling the room with an oppressive sense of dread. Sarah felt a surge of panic rise within her as she realized they were not alone. Without a word, they turned and fled from the house, their footsteps echoing in the darkness as they ran. The trees seemed to leer at them as they passed, their twisted branches reaching out like gnarled fingers. They didn't stop running until they reached the safety of their car, their breath coming in ragged gasps as they collapsed onto the ground.
Sarah fumbled with the keys, her hands shaking as she tried to start the engine. Come on, come on, she muttered under her breath, her heart pounding in her chest. Finally, the engine roared to life and they peeled out onto the road, leaving the haunted house behind them. As they drove away, Sarah couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched, that something malevolent lurked in the darkness, waiting to strike. But they didn't stop until they reached the next town, their hearts still racing with fear as they pulled into the safety of a brightly lit gas station. And even then, they couldn't shake the feeling that they had narrowly escaped something unspeakable, something that lurked in the darkness of the night.